Hello, I am Burt Green and this is the Burt Locker. It's basically a mixed martial arts show or a show about any sports that I find interesting, really. It's funny, it's lighthearted, it's not to be taken too seriously. Uh, I usually do uh, a full casuals guide to every UFC event. That's over on my YouTube channel now, so go and check that out. Don't forget to subscribe if you could. It really helped me out. Much appreciated. This is designed as more of a little bit of a deep dive into a couple of the fights that I'm finding a little bit more interesting, just because you can't obviously go too in-depth when you're trying to cover the whole card in 15 minutes. So this is the deep dive into this, this week's event, UFC 286. I'm covering uh, the co-main event between Justin Gaethje and Rafael Fazeev. Excellent fight, that. Definitely that one's going to be fight of the night, I would think. Also covering and uh, looking into the main event, the trilogy uh, resolution between uh, Leon Edwards and Kamara Usman. So, going to start off in the co-main event. That one is going to be exclusively over onto my Patreon. So if you want to see my breakdown, my research into that fight, please head over to the Patreon on, uh, well, to the Burt Locker on Patreon now. So, so, main event, Leon Edwards versus Kamara Usman, the, the trilogy fight, the, the resolution to the, to the saga, as it were. You've got six foot playing, six foot, a two inch reach for Usman. Now the leg reaches in favour of Leon Edwards, which is important when you consider that head kick that he landed in the second meeting between the two. So let's take a look at Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards is a great kickboxer. His striking is unbelievably fluid. He hits with speed and timing, and he's got power as well. But he's mostly known for remaining composed and patient. Patience is a virtue with Leon Edwards' style. He waits for the opportunities to end the fight to present themselves to him. He doesn't push it, he doesn't chase it, and that's why he often ends up going ahead on scorecards, because he's not just chasing that one knockout. He will happily pick you apart, and he he has done so to many people on many different occasions. You know, the man's on an 11-fight winning streak, mostly due to picking people apart on the feet, just dismantling them. If you're going to stand with Leon Edwards, you're probably not going to come out on the winning end of it. It's just not, not going to happen. He is too good. He's, he's very well drilled. He's very well polished. His footwork is outstanding. He's very fast and he throws those kicks up top effortlessly and he waits. He waits. He, he, he takes a look at what your tells are. He sees how you react to things and then he throws the appropriate strike in the appropriate time. And that's how he got that knockout over Kamara Usman in the second fight. And let's bear, the, the only thing that I would say is that actually his wrestling defense is better than you expect it to be because... Obviously, the first fight with Kamar Usman, he got out-wrestled, he got dominated in that respect. But the first round, actually, he didn't. The first round was quite frustrating for Kamar Usman because he was stopping every single takedown. It's only when he starts to get a little bit fatigued that he, you know, the relentlessness of Usman took over. And in both fights, actually, the, the relentlessness of Usman's cardio and grinding style took over and he was able to get Leon Edwards down to the floor. In the first round, that wasn't the case. In the first round, you, I, I gave the first round to Leon Edwards in both meetings. Uh, they, the, I, I don't think I'm out of my mind in saying that. I really don't. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's, I am looking at it with somewhat of a bias because I usually am biased towards the English fighters and I won't pretend otherwise. But for me, the first round of each of their meetings went to Leon Edwards because he was able to stop the takedowns and keep the fight where he needs it. That's something he's very good at doing. He's very good at dictating where the fight takes place. And it, we've had people try and take him down before. You know, Bilal Muhammad, even, even in that fight that's ruled uh, no contest, I believe, uh, due to the eye poke, let's be fair, Leon was having his way in that fight. He looked sharper than ever. He was coming off a really long layoff and he looked sharper than ever. Against Nate Diaz, other than that one like slap that you know like that, that wobbled him P people always point to that moment but you forget that outside of that 1.5 minutes one and a half minutes leon edwards dominated 23 and a half minutes of that fight but people only remember that one part like leon edwards was near perfect in that fight and and, D and nate diaz is not a bad boxer it's just that Leon Edwards was just that much better, that much crisper, and he kept it in a kickboxing range because he's very good at identifying the range where he can excel and he can play to his opponent's weaknesses. And that's something... He's very smart. He's a very clever fighter, is Leon Edwards. His fight IQ is actually very, very high. And that's why he's the champion of the world right now. Because people can say it was a lucky kick. It... it 
look, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Leon Edwards prepared for that strike. He prepared for it. He saw how, how Usman was ducking his head and he threw that kick and knocked him into next week. And he knocked him out cold. That was a nasty knockout. Usman can play it off as as whatever he wants. But that was a nasty knockout. He says, well, you know, it didn't hurt and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because you were out cold, mate. It's like you've been given uh, an anesthetic. Like, yeah, that doesn't hurt either. But he separated you from your consciousness. That is what happened. And that's an interesting point in this fight. So let's take a look at Kamara Usman then really quickly. He's got unbelievable wrestling. Like his control is outstanding. You saw what he did to Tyrone Woodley. He's just able to... When he dictates the pace of the fight, he imposes a pace that usually his opponents cannot keep up with. It's not necessarily like a blistering pace, like a Colby Covington or even a Murad Bavadishvili. It's not a blistering pace, but it's a methodical, grinding pace that he will just use to wear you out and Usman trains altitude he's got cardio for days he could do 10 rounds if he wanted to that's a huge weapon for Kamara Usman his cardio is off the scale it really is you can't measure how high it is he's also got very good power in that right hand that right cross he covers a lot of distance and he generates a lot of power he's got a very nice jab as well actually his boxing has come quite a long way uh, when you saw that jab that dropped gilbert burns it was really a thing of beauty that being said a lot of the time he has success with those strikes because he threatens with the wrestling and because even if he hasn't threatened with the wrestling in that fight, people know Kamar Usman, he, he likes to wrestle. So they're preparing for that. So if he implements his wrestling and he usually does, he is capable of beating anybody. He's in that style is a tough one to stop because in the UFC, you know, it's not like, um, cause look, look at the Marab Dvalish Billy fight just this past weekend. He shot something like 44 takedowns and landed five out of five out of 44, which is ridiculous for me. That's not really even a win, but actually in the UFC it is because look, he doesn't have to get the takedown. He just has to keep trying over and over again. And if he's got the cardio to do it, as long as he gets that one takedown and controls you, that's the round. And that is how the UFC scoring system does favor wrestlers in that respect. It really does. Because Kamar Usman could shoot 10 takedowns in, in a round. Leon Edwards could stop nine. Usman gets that one, controls him on the ground for two minutes out of the five minutes of the round. And the judges will give him that round. That's how it will happen. So it's a powerful weapon to have, that wrestling. Especially that relentless grinding wrestling as well. Because it doesn't matter how many shots you have. You, can, you, could, you could only hit 5% of your takedowns. But you'll still win the fight because you have controlled where the fight is taking place. And actually, when somebody's defending takedowns, they're not hitting you, are they? Generally speaking, they're trying to defend those hands and they're trying to defend the takedown or they're getting to the fence and defending you on there. At which point you're taking the dominant position. And again, that looks favorably in terms of the judges. So the wrestling is a, is a very useful tool to have in a mixed martial arts fight. Now, in summary... This is the third fight in the trilogy. In both fights, I would say that Leon started well and possibly he faded due to a bit of fatigue. And the second fight was at altitude and Usman trains at altitude. So we do need to bear in mind this fight is not taking place at altitude. It's taking place at sea level, a similar uh, level to where Leon Edwards trains. Leon trains in Birmingham. Obviously, this fight's taking place in London, but it's all much of a muchness. So Leon's probably not going to... For me... I feel like Leon's cardio should probably hold up a little better in this one, which means that in theory, he should be able to stop the takedowns for longer. Now, if he can do that, he can frustrate Kamar Usman. We're going to see a different Kamar Usman in there because we've got to bear in mind that knockout, it must play into Kamar Usman's mind. doesn't matter how much he says that it doesn't. It 100% does. And we're either going to, we got one thing's for certain, I would say, we're going to see a different Kamar Usman than we saw in the second Leon fight. Good or bad, it's going to be different because we're either going to see him just kind of relentlessly commit to the wrestling, really commit because he knows that Leon could knock his lights out at any time. And you're not catching up 
to Leon Edwards' level of striking in the time between the second and the third uh, and this fight. It's, it's just not going to happen. Don't get me wrong, Usman's striking is good. He has improved, but it is not at the level of Leon Edwards. If he stands with Leon Edwards, Leon Edwards can knock him out. We've seen it before and it could happen again very, very easily because Leon is a better striker. That is a fact. Usman is the better wrestler. That is a fact. It just depends who can implement their game plan in this one. And for me, the fact that the this one's not taking place at altitude does play into Leon's favour a little bit because his cardio is going to hold up that little bit better. If he can perform in the second round as he did in the first round of both of their meetings, all of a sudden Kamaru Usman may start getting a little frustrated, a little desperate maybe, because he's like, I cannot take him down. What's going on here? Oh, his cardio is holding up better. And I've seen some pictures of Leon... Leon's training for this camp uh, and he looks in outstanding shape, unbelievable shape. So I think we're going to see a better Leon Edwards here. I don't know if we're going to see a better Kamar Usman. I think that that is completely up for debate at this point because something else that you have to bear in mind is that Usman has been saying some very odd things, especially straight after the fight. He went on to Joe Rogan. I think that there was something not right in his head because he was, he was coming across very, very strange. He was saying how he thinks he's going to be the crowd favourite in London because the UK is half African. Now, I don't know if that's just because he's misinformed, but that's not that's nowhere near true. If, if you check check the statistics, it's nowhere near true. And also, even if like it, that aside, if he thinks he's walking into the O2 arena to be cheered when he's fighting the UK champion, he's dreaming. I've been to fights for the UFC. Michael Bisping versus Dan Henderson. And like Henderson is a legend of the sport. MMA fans love Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson still got booed like a pantomime villain. And it seemed to kind of upset him a bit. He even said when he retired, was it like, because when he retired in the octagon, you know, everyone cheered him. He's like, where are all these cheers when I was walking down here? It's like, dude, you're the villain in this. Like you're, you're the American coming to beat our English fella. You're the villain in this. So that's how it's going to be treated. And I don't know if that, that may may that may be a factor in this one. Leon, Leon's going to have a lot of support there. I guarantee you that. He's going to have a lot of support. And that can really help a fighter out. It can. Like, uh, in the second fight with, with Dan Henderson, Michael Bisping got, got smashed in that second round. Or was it the first round? Either way, I don't think he would have gotten up from that had he not been in front of a home crowd just willing him to get back to his feet. There is something to that. There is something to it. There is a home field advantage and Leon has got it in this one. And the fights, and they're so well skilled, both of them, that I feel like every advantage that you can get is going to be a factor. So the, the hometown advantage, I think it plays into Leon's favour. And... My pick for this one is that Leon's going to start well, as they have done in each meeting. And I think that being on home turf is going to help him out a little bit. I think his cardio is going to hold up a little bit better. It's going to allow him to stop the takedowns in the second round, as he usually did in the first round in their, in their meetings. I think that's going to get into Usman's head. Because Usman, he's coming off that big knockout. He's never been beaten like that before. And it's going to be in his head. And we're going to see... Usman maybe get a little reckless, maybe start chasing things to try and desperately grab rounds. And that's when Leon's going to be able to find those counters. And I think Leon's going to pick him apart because the great Chael P. Sonnen, he might not get his fight picks right a lot of the time. They call it the Chael curse. But one thing Chael P. Sonnen is very good with is his knowledge of the fight game. And there's one thing that he says that is often correct, and it is it, he is often correct in this regard. In a rematch between two fighters, the younger fighter will win, but faster. Leon Edwards is 31. Kamar Usman is 35. I think that Leon Edwards gets this one done within four rounds. That is my pick. But either way, this is a huge fight. I am excited as hell for this. It's one of the biggest main events the UK has had in a very long time. I would have liked to have gotten tickets, but honestly, they were ridiculously priced, especially on the resale sites as well. Absolutely 
ridiculous. So I am going to go to a bar and watch it because it's on at the UK time. I don't know which bar yet, but I'm really looking forward to just sitting with a few of my mates, having a couple of beers, watching it at a normal time and seeing a, a, just an event of the magnitude of this with Raphael Fazeev and Justin Gaethje in the co-main event. Absolutely unbelievable fight. And then the main event trilogy title on the line Leon Edwards against Kamara Usman is a fantastic fight I'd love to watch it's always going to be fun looking forward to it let's see how this pans out I'll do a recap of it all next week on the show so if you could just once again if I could ask you if you could subscribe that really really do do appreciate it don't think about it just hit the subscribe button many thanks and until next time keep those odds long and those bets terrible